This video is all about the brand new Clucking Bell Farm Raid. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, the new raid is finally here. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a guide to walk through the fastest, easiest way that I have found so far to do this brand new raid. And you're probably thinking to yourselves, well, it just came out today. How on earth have you tested all of these things out? Well, instead of just playing it straight through from start to finish, I actually spent about three plus hours just going into each individual mission, restarting them, trying it again to see which way works best. And I also have a lot of information that I learned doing this that I want to share with you guys. So if you're just starting out here today for the first time, this video will definitely have at least one or two things in it to help you. Or if you've done it once before and maybe you didn't know how to do it stealthy or you found certain missions difficult, hopefully me explaining some things in this video will help you out too. But essentially in this video, I'm going to be going over all of the setup missions and how I did them and the easiest way to do them and ways that the game kind of tricks you a little bit. We're going to be doing this entire thing stealthy, so showing you how to do it without being detected. And we'll be myth-busting some things along the way. For example, first... For the lift. First myth. For some reason, there was a rumor going around. I don't know who bloody hell started it. The, the payout for this is 250000 but since it just came out, it's two times pay, so it's 500000 for this week only. That is absolute rubbish. So the pay for this is $500,000. If you are the host, if you're not the host and you hire some people, they'll get paid like 50000 And as a matter of fact, today, or not even today, the first time you complete it, so by the time we finish this video, you'll see, we actually get 850000 for completing this thing. I'll explain it all at the end of this video, but 850k. So suck on that, people that say it's only 250. All right, so let's just go ahead, jump straight into it, walk you through all of the setup missions. I'm just going to be doing a little voiceover explaining to you what happens and how I did it, and then giving you tips and tricks along the way. Then we'll jump into the finale. Same thing. And hopefully you'll learn something here today. Let's do it. All right, so first things first, a lot of people have been asking me and I've been seeing it quite a lot. How do you launch these missions? How do you get Vincent to call you? He's not calling me. So for me, I was driving around in my brand new vehicle right here, which I have a video on my channel. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. This thing's an absolute beast. I'm pretty sure they're going to nerf it. But anyway, I was driving around in this, not getting a phone call. As soon as I got out of my vehicle, as you can see right here, Vincent does end up calling me. So if you're driving around, flying around, trying to get him to call you, just get out your vehicle. Maybe it'll help you out and he'll call you. But anyway, I'm not going to play through all of him talking and the cutscenes and things like that. You guys can watch this for yourself. This is more of just a tips and a guide on how to do all these missions. So once you finish this phone call, let's skip ahead until we get to the police station. So after the phone call, you'll get a V on your map. Head on over to there. And the very first mission, you won't, it won't show you the options for the missions like it will later on, as you'll see. It'll just straight away launch the slush fund mission. This is essentially just a setup mission, right? This is the first initial setup mission. You're just getting some cash. And as you can see, we are in hard mode. So 1.5 times GTA money and RP. I'm going to be doing all of these in hard mode. But to be completely honest with you, if you're one of those people that's like, I'm struggling, don't do it in hard mode. It's just, I don't even think it's worth it because you got to keep in mind, this 1.5 times GTA money and RP is only for each individual specific mission. So each setup mission, you can get 1.5 times RP. You're not going to get 1.5 times RP for the finale. The finale, you're going to get 500,000 no matter what. 1.5 times RP, you'll get a few thousand extra. I personally don't think it's worth it. But anyway, let's launch this up. All right, so here's the cut scene that we've all seen a million times at this point. So we'll skip through this. So first thing you'll notice, I'm here in my brand new vehicle. So yes, you can do these missions with your personal vehicle. And I thought, okay, if we can use our personal vehicle after this mission, I'm going to switch to my Oppressor Mark II and I'll use that instead. Wrong. It will not let you use the Oppressor Mark II. It won't spawn in. You also can't get your Sparrow or anything like that. So if I was you, I would choose like an Armored Karuma. I would make that your personal vehicle. That way, when you do these missions, that will always spawn. And it'll just make your life a little bit easier. So make sure you get the Armored Karuma. Set it as your personal vehicle when you start these up. Oh, if you're like, you know what? I don't need armor. I'm an absolute unit. I'm a beast. Get the fastest car possible. That way you can get around the map even faster and get these missions done sooner. Now, all of these from start to finish, they could probably take about 45 minutes to an hour. But obviously, the first time you do it, it's probably going to take you over an hour or so. Um, but that's fine. But anyway, first mission, you're going to head on over to A. Now, for this mission, you are going to have to go to both A and B, which is not the case later on, but I'll explain that. So once you get to your first location, you're just going to kill a few people outside. No big deal. Head on inside. And then you're going to steal the cash out of the washing machines or the tumble dryers. So once you've got all the cash out of the first building, just go ahead and exit. 
get in your vehicle, drive on over to the next one and do the same thing again there. Once you have collected all of the cash, you are going to drive on over to Vincent's lockup. This is just going to be your like new hub. This is where all of your missions are going to end. So once you get there, as you can see right here, we didn't even, it doesn't even tell me how much money I got. It was two times or one, one and a half times GTA money in RP. It doesn't, it didn't even tell me. So I, you know what? It, uh, it is what it is. All right. So at this point I switched my oppressor mark too, like I say, cause I was like, oh, this will make my life a little bit easier. But no, once you start missions, this just vanishes and you've got to use whatever card they give you. Once you've completed the first mission, as you can see right here, it says the clucking bell farm raid and you have all the setup missions. Let's go ahead and start up the first one, a breaking and entering. So for this one, once again, as you can see, I do have it on hard mode and we are going to be doing all of these solo. Now for this mission, it was fairly easy. You're just going to get in your vehicle, drive on over to the terabyte. Once you get to the terabyte, you're just going to have like three or four waves of drones and they really weren't that difficult. I just, I don't even remember what gun I used, like a heavy machine gun here. And you're just going to take out like three waves of drones. Once you've taken out those drones, you're going to go ahead and enter the terabyte. Once inside the terabyte, you're going to see the marked location. You're going to pick up the hacking device. Once you've got that, you're going to leave and get back in your car and then head on over to the pier. So once you get to the pier, you're going to get a text message telling you who you're looking for. Now, it's not going to be in the same place every single time. So I wish I could just be like, this is where he's going to be. I could show you where he was for me, but he is going to move around. But anyway, this is where he was for me, <laughs> as you can see here. Now, you can just shoot him or you can just grab the laptop from next to him. I grabbed the laptop from next to him and then I started walking away. He started chasing me, so we just kind of... We had a little fist fight. What can I say? I don't know how it ended. Anyway, once you've picked up the laptop, you're going to head on over to the cartel's compound. Once at the compound, you're going to have a little gunfight with a few of these people and one of them is going to drop a key. Now, I never tried doing this too stealthily. I just kind of shot at them all. But like I say, you're going to have to find a key. So you're going to have to kill quite a few of them anyway until they drop it. But this guy dropped the key for me. Once you've got the key, you're going to literally get inside of this train. Now, for me, I don't know about you guys, but for me, this got a little confusing. It's saying, you know, obviously, what to accelerate, brake, all of that. That's that's not the issue. It was the part where it says the hacking device can be used to switch the signal lights. The train will engage in emergency brake if it switches a uh, signal which has not been switched. If it reaches a signal, it's not been switched. That just confused me, okay? I don't know. But all you're going to have to want to do, ladies and gentlemen, it's easy. You don't even need to shoot anyone. You don't need to do anything. Just drive the train at full speed. As soon as you get into the little red circle, as you can see on my minimap right there you're just going to press right on your d-pad or whatever it prompts you to do if you're on keyboard and it's literally just going to turn it green that's it you don't need to slow down you don't need to just go full speed ahead don't worry about any of the people chasing you if they get in your way you will blow them up you're just going to keep on trucking until you go through all of them and like i say as soon as you get into the red circle it's going to prompt you already to use the hacking device. So just don't make it too difficult for yourself is basically what I'm saying. For me, I, I overthought it. But anyway, eventually you're going to go into the tunnel and that is going to be where the mission ends. And again, it didn't show me how much money I got, so I have not a clue. All right, now here we are back at the police station with Vincent and we're going to do our second setup mission, Concealed Weapons. Now, this is where it gets interesting, ladies and gentlemen. I've talked about this when I showed you my clucking bell videos literally weeks ago, months ago. I told you there is multiple options on what you want to choose. Basically, easy, medium, and hard. Are you going to choose weapons that are easier? Are you going to choose heavier weapons where you've got to steal them from the military? Now, it's not that straightforward. There is kind of a trick to this. Now, you'll get a text message as you can see right here and it'll show you all of them target a being like the easiest and then b and c being the most difficult being military so i decided you know what i'm doing this stealthily and sneakily i'm not gonna need weapons i'm just gonna get the easiest possible so i went straight on over to a now for me let me know what you guys think in the comment section or if you had the same issue but i think a was actually bugged for me because when you get to the location it's supposed to show you two things, weapons and gear. And they will both show up on your minimap as two different like green markers. But for me, as you can see here, it only showed one, which was the weapons. I couldn't pick up any gear from this location. So I had to go on over to B, which you do not have to do in these missions. These specific missions where it gives you A, B and C, 
you can choose which you which one you want to do. If you want to do all of them and then decide later on, you can do that. Or if you just want to go and grab one of them, you can do that and set that as your as your mission. That's you know, you pick A for example, those are the weapons and gear that you choose. You don't need to go to C and um, B. You don't need to do it. But for me, I had to go to B. So anyway, as you can see here, once we got to B, it was a little bit more of a difficult mission than just the first one, A, because obviously the weapons are going to be a little bit better. But you can see there is two green markers for this one, which obviously one of them is the weapons and one of them is the gear. But anyway, once we grabbed both of those, we just headed straight back to Vincent's lockup. It still shows A, B, and C on the mini map, making you think, well, maybe I should go to one of those. No, don't worry about it. Just go. And you, listen, you, you don't need the heavy ones. You don't need to go to C. You don't need B. Go to A. If it has only one, though, if it's bugged like me and it only showed weapons and not gear, you're going to have to go to B or C. But you, you don't need that many crazy weapons for this one. If you're doing it stealthy, I should say. Anyway, that is it for that mission. And once you come back, you can see right here, there's actually options. So you can see for weapons, I actually had the A and B, the Mambunta and the Professionals, because I picked up weapons from both, so I could choose which one I wanted. But when I went on to gear, it only showed me the Professionals, because the first place I went to, like I say, it was bugged and it didn't show me anywhere. Or oh, there wasn't a marker, basically. So I only chose one gear. I only had one option to choose gear, which was the Professionals, because that's the one I went to next on the boat. But like I say, if you just go to one location, pick up both things, you don't need to go anywhere else if that's what you want to do okay so the next setup mission is going to be hit and run same thing for this one we did all of these in hard mode now this one is where it gets interesting and something that i didn't know going into this now i know and i've told you guys and we all know that there's easy medium and hard like we just saw for the weapons there was a b and c but one thing you may not know and this is something that i learned here today is that let's say we get a for the weapons if we choose the vehicle like we're doing right now and we go to A again, it's actually going to be more difficult than going to one of the other ones like professional or the military. And for the reason for that, they actually say it in here. Take a listen to this. I should remind you, these groups are the same people you may have visited when sourcing your equipment. If you pay the same crew another visit, expect increased security. You finessed the intergenerous last time. Estimate their ability to adapt. Even when it comes to their rusty ass car, you will find more resistance. Honestly, I'm surprised to find this gang in this neck of the woods. Back to the same guys. You must really have it in for. So once you've hit them once, they basically have more security and they, you know, they they're more prepared for you to attack. So what the game actually wants you to do is have a different A, B, and C for the all setups. So for the weapons and gear and for the getaway vehicle, they want you to choose different ones. They don't want you to have like the, the military vehicle and the military weapons. You can do that, but it's just going to be more difficult setup missions. They want, if you want it to be easier, they want you to choose like A for the guns and then like C for the, the, the getaway vehicle, essentially. So a good example of that is I drove to A, having just got A as our weapons... And to be honest, I didn't have snacks or armor or anything like that. But this one, there were so many people. They were definitely prepared. And again, he did warn me saying that they were going to be prepared because we, we've just literally already attacked them. And I actually ended up dying. And we're doing this in hard mode, don't forget. So we don't have two lives. We only have one life. So I decided, you know what? Since he is telling me that maybe I should go and attack somebody else instead of doing the same people, I was like, screw it. We'll go to C and go to the military for our getaway vehicle. And that is exactly what I did. And as you can see right here, it's actually super easy. It looks difficult, but as long as you have a rail gun, which by the way is in the gun van right now, I think it takes four shots to the cargo bob and it will drop the vehicle. And then we just took out all of the other helicopters as well. And it does say this, take a listen. Chopper is transporting our vehicle. Shoot it down. And don't worry, this ride is tough. They can take the fall. Supposedly, you don't have to worry about it taking damage when it falls. That is rubbish, which you'll find out here in a second. So once we took out the helicopters and picked up our vehicle right here, we headed on over to the garage. Now, there is going to be a few people along the way shooting at you, but this thing is fast enough. That you should be able to outdrive them and get to the garage. Now, this is where I made a huge mistake, rookie mistake. So once we got to the garage right here, I chose the Mammoth Patriot, as you can see, and I hit confirm. And then when I went outside, I didn't see the leave the area thing at the bottom of my 
my screen. And I actually thought that was it. We were done. Once I selected it, I was like, oh, we're done. But it's dumped me all the way up here, up north. Let me switch lobbies to get closer to the police station. And that wiped the entire thing. Because it said, leave the area. And obviously, me being stupid, I basically just quit the mission. So I had to redo it again. But well, funnily enough, the second time, as you can see here, we took all the vehicles out, all the helicopters, the same as last time. But the bloody getaway car, not only was it a steaming pile of dog turd, it was nowhere near as good as the vehicle we got the first time, but you can see it is bloody smoking. The vehicle was damaged from falling from the stupid cargo bob. So what did that mean? It was slow. It kept like slowing down. All the cars that were chasing us were able to keep up with us and overtake us. It was a hot steaming mess. We ended up dying, so I had to redo it again. All because I forgot to bloody just leave the area the first time, man. All right, second time, it was the exact same thing, though. We just took out, took out the helicopters, grabbed the vehicle. Unfortunately, it was the same stinky vehicle again, but this time it wasn't smoking. And it would seem that like, the car in front of us or something threw a banana out because you see how we spun here? I am sure there was a lot of people watching this that either have done this same thing or are about to do the same thing. I'm not sure what it is. It's like someone threw out oil slicks on us. It happened to me multiple times where I'm driving and I just completely lose traction and my car spins around. It happened on this setup mission and it happened on the one earlier that I was saying that I did. The same mission, just on the A1, that truck spun out too. Not a clue why. Anyway, drive it all the way back to the garage. Once you get there, this time, don't leave the game. Choose it as your vehicle um, and then just leave the garage, then leave the area. And there you go. Mission pass. All right, so now we're on disorganized crime setup mission. Let's do it. This is one of my favorites. I love this one. All right, so we're doing on hard mode once again, solo. Let's play. So for this one, you're going to drive on over to a location where there's going to be two van super easy you're gonna get behind the first van hack it and then shoot them as soon as they get out once the hacking is complete the reason for that is as you can see right here they have dropped a disguise you're gonna want to put on that disguise just to make yourselves or make your life a little bit easier now once you've grabbed that go ahead and chase down the second truck exact same thing you're just gonna sit behind it until you get all the information and then you're gonna shoot them inside and then drive away you don't need to get out for that disguise because you already have it now you're going to drive to the cartel's garage. Now, like I say, we are going to be doing this silent and stealthy. Uh, so we're going to be sneaking for this one. So if you want to see how I do it, just pay attention. All right, so my strategy for this was to take out absolutely everyone. So you can see we took out the first few people there, took out this person. Then we go up here to the left. And there is a strategy to this because people do walk around and they can see dead bodies like the KO Perico Heist. So you want to make sure you take them out either in the same order that I'm doing or just pay attention. Now for this guy, you're going to take out the camera first because you don't see it on the minimap, but there is a camera right there and it will trigger if it sees a dead body. So anyway, I continue on all of these and once all of those are taken out, then you're going to make sure you sabotage all four of these vehicles. So just walk over to all four of them hit right on the d-pad or whatever it is on keyboard and sabotage them once all four of them are sabotaged you're going to walk up the stairs right here as you can see and right on the right hand side there is going to be a drill go ahead and pick up that drill once you got that drill we're going to go into the room on the right first and you're going to take out these guards both of them like i say are very easy and then you're going to head on over to the room next to it and take out those guards also the reason for that is this drill is noisy you'll see when you're trying to drill the red ring around it so you want to make sure you go to both rooms and take out the guards first that way no one will hear it but make sure you're paying attention because as you can see right here after i took out those final two guards as i was literally just starting up i noticed on my minimap there was more guards that had spawned in now there is two guards as you can see here that spawn in these are the only other guards that are going to spawn in. So just take out these two guards and you'll be good for the rest of this. Nobody else is going to come in. So you can easily just relax and go through all of these lockers. And there is going to be cash in some of them too. So just take your time, go through all of these, go into the next room, go through all of those. And then make sure once you're completed, 
you head on down to this room right here because you can hack it and make sure you steal the CCTV footage. Now, don't worry. If you do get caught and you're trying to do this stealthy, you can go and steal the CCTV footage afterwards and they won't know you are here if you trigger like one or two people. But if there's too many people in there, one of them will leak it. Even if you go and get the footage, you'll hear the prompt and they'll say like, oh, there was a snitch or something. The people at the factory know you're coming. It's We'll get way more information and details as this weekend irons out how exactly this works. But just make sure you're wiping the footage no matter what. All right, once you've done that, if you're doing this the stealthy way like I am, you're going to walk straight out and there's going to be a clucking bell truck sitting right there. Just go ahead, steal that and take it back to Vincent. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is all the setup. Super quick, super easy. Like I say, I'm going to be trying to do like a, almost like a speed run of that, this, that, this, this, that, this weekend. Anyway, we'll see how fast we can get this thing done. All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the finale. Again, we're doing this in hard mode. So as you can see, depending on how you're doing this, if you're doing it the same way that I've done it here today, we're going to be coming in and we're doing it stealthy. And because we're doing it stealthy, the forklift is going to pick us up inside of this crate right here and drop us off inside of the factory. So once you're inside of the factory, just go ahead and hop on out, take out the first guy, second guy, and third guy. Guy, and then just wait right here until there's a person you can see on the mini map that is kind of looking and his crosshairs going into the building or into the room you're in just wait for him to turn around as soon as he does just take out the just take out the power right there and the guy on the other side is going to start walking towards you take him out walk around the corner take out the first guy take out these two and then at this point, you can take a breather here for a second, but then there's going to be a guard that's going to start walking towards you, as you can see up here. Once he starts walking towards you, I would just take him out immediately, take out the guy on the right, then run forward and take out the guard on the right-hand side. Now, from here, those two guards you could see that were in front of you, they're actually going to leave that room. There was some people in there. They've left. So we're just going to walk straight on through to that yellow marker. Don't worry about the people in the other rooms. Just go straight up to this door. Once you've opened it, you're just going to head on downstairs, take out the three people that are inside, and then we're going to be stealing all of the Coca-Cola, ladies and gentlemen. So just fill your bags up with all of the Coca-Cola that's in here. It's not going to fill your bag full. We'll do that here in a little bit. But just get everything that is inside of this room. Once you've got it, go ahead and exit. All right, once we exit this room, as you can see on the mini map, we're going to take out the guy next to us first. Then we're going to take out the guard that is walking towards us, just because I don't want him seeing the dead body. Then the guy on the left of me, and then we're going to finally take out the guy that's furthest away. Now, at this point, you can use your key card to open up this shutter, just like the other building. And inside of here, there's going to be two guards. The first thing I do, just to make it easier for yourself, take out both of the guards. Once they're taken out, you can just take your time going through all of these crates. Now, inside of these crates, some of them could be empty or some of them could have some Coca-Cola like you saw in the first one. Second one, we didn't have any luck. That one was empty. And then we went to the third one, which had more Coca-Cola, which actually filled up our entire bag. So we didn't need to worry about that anymore. All right, from here, we're just going to exit and run straight on over to this room. Now, these guards you can see right here. This is one of the times where you have to be fast. You know what I mean? Like during KO Perico Heist and all of that, I sometimes say you got to do it the same speed I do so that the guards are in the same place. So what I ended up doing is we waited until the guards looked like this. Once it looked like that, I ran straight in and took out the guard that was right in front of me. Then I took out the guard that was over the other side. And then at this point, the reason I say to do it fast is because all the guards are kind of like their views are all overlapping each other. And if they start moving, they're going to see the dead body. So we took out the first guy, second guy, and then we ran straight forward and turned and took out the third guy. And then there was a guard coming, like I say, because they're walking towards this body. So I had to sprint all the way over, take out the next guy, and then take out the final guy. We had to literally just run straight through there. Pop, 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 pop. 
so that they didn't see any dead bodies. So once you've done that, you're going to head on into the office where it's going to say start the hack on the office computer. Then you're going to pull out your handy dandy little tool right here and it's going to tell you to go on over. There's three PCs that are like scattered around the building. So just follow the beeps go over to the first one. You don't need to even press anything. You just walk over to it and it like automatically does it. Then over to the second and then third. Now, once you've got all three of them, you're going to head back to the office. And on your little scanner that you were using, as you can see right here, it's going to have the code for the safe. So let's go ahead and type this code in. Now, as soon as you finish looting that safe, the alarm's going to go off. No matter what, no matter if you did it stealthy or anything like that, it's going to go off. So just head on over to the exit. And you can do this without being caught or even having like the wanted stars know where you are. So if you see, I got very unlucky. You can see we went into here and it just so happened as I stood outside, a cop car drove past and they saw me, which triggered the police on me immediately. And then I was, you know, just started shooting everyone because everyone knew where I was. If you just wait for a second for that cop car to drive past so it doesn't see you, so you're not running straight into its cone of vision, you can do this and it'll have your stars flashing and you'll be able to kind of sneak your way around to get your vehicle instead of doing what I did when I got caught where we had to go just guns a blazing. So anyway, head on over to where your vehicle is located. And once you've grabbed it, what I did is I literally just stayed on this train track all the bloody way there. I'm not joking. I just stayed on the train track. Don't even worry about them. Don't try and shoot at anybody. Just stay on the train track until you get to like, I would say right about this location right here is where I eventually finally pulled off. You can see we went from a four to a three got down into the city and then eventually they just left and we just had to deliver the loot to Vincent's lockup. All right, and as you can see right here, mission passed. We got the 500,000 uh, for completing the heist as a, or as the raid, I should say, as the, the main person. But then as soon as you get out of the heist, as you can see right here, you're going to get an additional $250,000. Now that $250,000 is a one-time bonus. You're going to get it for the first time you complete this raid as the leader. You will get $250,000. As well as that, as you can see on screen right here, just shortly after, we got an additional $100,000. That additional $100,000 is actually from the weekly challenge. So if you're doing this a week from now, you're not going to get that additional $100,000. You're only going to get it this week. Now, you will also get 250000 for completing it for the first time as a member, not just as the leader. So if you want even an additional 250000 maybe help each other out. If you have some friends, do it with them once and you'll get 250, and then they can do it with you. You'll get the 250 for doing it as a leader. So that is $1.1 million in total that you can make from doing this raid just this week. If you do it by yourself, you'll get it as a leader. And if you do it with somebody else, you'll get an additional 250, which would be like, yeah, like 1.1 million. So I'd definitely jump in and test it out for you guys as selves this week. And uh, I personally think it was a lot of fun. So let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section down below. If there's anything that you guys would like me to go over, like I say, I spent like three plus hours just trying to dig into little details to see what would make it easier. Um, and then I put this video together for you guys. But I am going to be trying to basically like speed run it we'll probably see me do that this weekend trying to complete this thing in 45 minutes from start to finish 45 minutes or less so let's just see how fast we can do it and i'm also going to do it in like normal mode i feel like doing it in hard mode just really, this, the money is just pointless but let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below if there's anything you would like me to cover be sure to leave it in the comments i read every single comment i'll try and respond to every single one of you guys but uh if you have anything specific i will make a video on it for this weekend but anyway i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day I hope you enjoy in this new raid and I'll see you tomorrow as always with a brand new video. Goodbye.